Ezra chapter 9 to 10. Continued. 2 of 2. Revival under Ezra. After this great prayer meeting, there began a movement of revival, and revival always leads to reformation. When there is true revival, you don't need a fingerprint expert to find the results. Now when Ezra had prayed, and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel, a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore, Ezra 10 1. An intense conviction of sin came over God's people at this particular time, and it was certainly something that was needed. And Shechaniah the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God, and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing, Ezra 10 2. This man Shechaniah, apparently became the mouthpiece for this group of people, who recognized their sin and wanted to confess. He came to Ezra and said, We have trespassed against our God. That is a very candid acknowledgement. He continued, We have taken strange wives of the people of the land. That, my friend, is nailing it down and dealing with specifics. What they had done was absolutely contrary to the law of Moses. They had not consulted in this grave matter, that which was written. In other words, they had departed from the word of God. Now he casts himself upon the mercy of God and says, Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God, to put away all the wives, and such as are born of them, according to the counsel of my Lord, and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God, and let it be done according to the law, Ezra 10 3. There were those who now joined in confession, who likewise trembled at the commandment of God. That is, they not only had read it, and studied it, they let the word of God have its way in their hearts. When the transgression was called to their attention, they confessed it. They did not attempt to rationalize, make excuse, or cover over their sin. They came right out and confessed it. They did this according to the word of God. Arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee, we also will be with thee, be of good courage, and do it. Then arose Ezra, and made the chief priests, the Levites, and all Israel, to swear that they should do according to this word. And they swear. Then Ezra rose up from before the house of God, and went into the chamber of Johanan the son of Eliashib. And when he came thither, he did eat no bread, nor drink water, for he mourned because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. Ezra 10 4-6 breaking the law of God was a very serious thing. They went before him with great travail of soul. What everyone went through is rather heart-rending, but the word of God had been transgressed, and the people had to repent. Friend, that is where revival must begin. First, we must walk in the light of God's word. When we come to the word of God, it brings conviction to our hearts. We see that we are coming short of the glory of God. We realize that we are openly transgressing, that which God has written. When we go to Him in confession, and there is real repentance, the result will be that God's children will be revived. Today we are busy preaching repentance to a lost world. I am not sure, that God is asking the lost world to repent. He is saying to the world, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, Acts 16 31. When you come to Christ as Savior, something else happens. It happened in Thessalonica. In 1 Thessalonians 1 9 Paul says, For they themselves show of us, what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols, to serve the living and true God. Turning to God, took priority, over turning from idols. Repentance does not precede faith. Faith goes before, and repentance follows, it follows as surely as the night follows day. If it doesn't follow, the faith is not genuine, it isn't saving faith. Repentance is the thing that is so lacking in the church today. Have you ever noticed, that in the Bible, God asks the church to repent? In the seven letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor, recorded in the book of Revelation, God asks all but two of them to repent. God was talking to believers, not to unsaved people. Personally, I do not agree with these people, who are constantly asking the mayor, or governor, or the president to declare a day of prayer. They say, let's have a national day of prayer. We need prayer. 
Oh, my friend, what are you talking about? I cannot believe that Ezra sent out word to the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites that they were invited to a great day of prayer. Let's face it, America is a pagan nation. Believers are a minority. This is a day when every minority is being heard except the Bible believers. I think one could organize a rally, of a host of people in our nation, for a day of prayer. But what good would it do? God is saying to the lost, come to me and be saved through Jesus Christ. He is saying to his church, repent, come back to me, come out of your coldness and indifference. The thing that we need today is revival, and a revival will not come without repentance among believers. In Ezra's day God's people were no longer indifferent, you see, but in our day there is indifference in the church. Lyman Abbott made this statement years ago, when I was a boy, I heard my father say, that if by some miracle God would change every cold, indifferent Christian into ten blatant infidels, the church might well celebrate a day of thanksgiving and praise. The trouble with the church today, is that it is filled with cold, indifferent church members, perhaps many of them are not even saved. If revival comes, friend, you are going to see this indifferent crowd, either come over on the Lord's side, or else they will make it very clear that they belong to the devil. Ezra went to God in genuine repentance, and others are following suit, and they made proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem, unto all the children of the captivity, that they should gather themselves together unto Jerusalem, and that whosoever would not come within three days, according to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all his substance should be forfeited, and himself separated from the congregation of those that had been carried away, Ezra 10 7-8 they were making a real line of separation. They are under the Mosaic law. In the church today, I don't believe you could force the issue, as they are doing here. They are removing all of the chaff that they possibly can, from the good wheat. It would take about three days to come from any section in that land, and this proclamation was directed to all those, who had come out of the Babylonian captivity, who had returned to rebuild the city, the walls, and the temple. They were to come together for a time of spiritual refreshing, but repentance must precede it. Those who would not come, because they felt that things were not being done the way they wanted them done, or had some other objection, were to be cast out of the congregation. The church needs house cleaning today. I don't mean taking from the church role, the names of the members who can't be located either. What the average church needs to do, is get rid of some of the members they can locate, those who need to repent, but will not repent. Bitterness today is like quinine in a barrel of water. It doesn't take much to make the water bitter. I remember when I was a boy, my mother would always tell me, when I cut up a chicken, be careful and don't break the gallbladder. You'll ruin the whole chicken if you do. She was right. You could spoil the entire fowl, if you broke the gallbladder. God wants to get rid of that gallbladder of bitterness in His church. For instance, Hebrews 12:15 says, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Just a few complainers and critics in the church, can absolutely stifle any spiritual movement. Oh, how many lives have been wrecked by bitterness! Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin, gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month, on the twentieth day of the month, and all the people sat in the street of the house of God, trembling because of this matter, and for the great rain. And Ezra the priest stood up, and said unto them, Ye have transgressed, and have taken strange wives, to increase the trespass of Israel. Now therefore make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers, and do his pleasure, and separate yourselves from the people of the land, and from the strange wives, Ezra 10 9-11. In other words, don't just be a hearer of the Word of God, but be a doer of the Word also. We are hearing a great deal today, about the need for action in the church, but what the church really needs, is to get cleaned up. There needs to be confession. Even a lack of love needs to be confessed. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another, John 13 35. Then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, As thou hast said, so must we do, Ezra 10 12. 
What Ezra asked these people to do, was a bitter pill to swallow. I am confident that there was a great wrenching of the heart, and a great agony of the soul, as these people separated themselves from their loved ones. It is interesting that while they were gathered together, quite a rainstorm came up. But the people are many, and it is a time of much rain, and we are not able to stand without, neither is this a work of one day or two, for we are many that have transgressed in this thing. Ezra 10 13 A rainstorm came up and everybody wanted to scatter. Now Ezra had a whole lot of sense. He said, we don't want to stand out here in all of this rain, especially because of the women and children. Instead of doing this in a slipshod manner, what we want to do, is come back another day, and do this thing right. Let now our rulers of all the congregation stand, and let all them which have taken strange wives in our cities come at appointed times, and with them the elders of every city, and the judges thereof, until the fierce wrath of our God for this matter be turned from us, Ezra 10 14. Ezra wanted things to be done in an orderly way, and this is what they did, and they gave their hands that they would put away their wives, and being guilty, they offered a ram of the flock for their trespass, Ezra 10 19. The offering mentioned speaks of the fact, that the people are united as one. They are united in this tremendous effort to set things right with God. Following this verse, is a list of those who agreed to put away their foreign wives. They entered into a solemn agreement, and pledged to do it. All these had taken strange wives, and some of them had wives by whom they had children, Ezra 10 44. This verse tells a sad story, does it not? The sins of the fathers will be visited on the children. We see here just how thoroughly this separation was to be carried out. Ezra was God's man for the hour. For this generation, at least, he helped preserve the testimony of the Jews, for the fulfillment of God's plan.